Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's go funny lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. They suggested I react to the biggest miracle of Prophet Muhammad. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. A single ordinary man and the profound message he proclaimed would change the world forever. His name was Muhammad. The Muslims absorbed the Sasanian Empire of Iran and two-thirds of the Christian Byzantine Empire. By now, the empire was larger than Rome. It stretched from Morocco in the west to the Indus River in the east, where the border of India is today. How had it happened that so small an army could conquer an area so large, so fast, so easily? Islam has come to stay. In just a hundred years, Muhammad's vision had transformed the spiritual and political map of the world. And his followers had established an empire larger than Rome. In a cave above Mecca, Muhammad had an experience that would be the defining moment of his life. An angel was said to appear before him in the form of a man, instructing him to recite in the name of God, the Almighty. For Muhammad, it was an encounter as profound as it was deeply disturbing. And that is the beginning of the prophetic career of Muhammad. The months to come would bring more revelations. Powerful words of a lyrical quality, more beautiful than the most exquisite Arabic poetry. Above all, Muhammad was to bear one message to his people, a simple yet radical proclamation, that there is only one God. The implications were staggering. One God meant one people. No more tribal divisions. To the poor and unprotected, the prospect was revolutionary. Muhammad's following began to grow. They called themselves Muslims, for those who surrender to God. They set out to preserve the message Muhammad had brought. This was the beginning of the Quran. The Quran is a revelation of spiritual teaching, of both ethical and social guidance. It was revealed and remains in Arabic. With words alone, the Quran delivers its vision to the faithful. Its imagery conjures a picture of the afterlife that resonates with all the power of traditional Bedouin poetry. As Muhammad's community grew, so did the opposition. The tribal leaders decided Muhammad and his message must be removed permanently. They demanded that Muhammad's uncle remove his clan's protection from the Prophet which would clear the way for his murder without the threat of retribution. But his uncle refused. The battle lines were drawn. Nothing short of tribal war would settle the conflict now. Muhammad's followers were forced from the marketplace and starved. 
those without clan protection were tortured and killed. In 619 AD, Muhammad's wife Khadija died, and his uncle as well. Gone were his first great love and his only protector. Here at last was the opportunity his enemies had been waiting for. But in the lush oasis town of Yathrib, north of Mecca, a refuge opened to Muhammad and his people. Clan rivalries had become deadly in the town, and they desperately needed a peacemaker. Muhammad agreed to travel to Yathrib and settle their disputes in exchange for a safe refuge for his people. For Muhammad's followers, leaving the place of their ancestors, their families and tribes was the ultimate test of devotion. In doing so, they began a new community, a new tribe. For the first time, they were bound together not by blood, but by faith. In the course of a single caravan journey, Islam marks its true beginnings. Their journey is known as the Hijra. 622 in the Christian calendar marks the Muslim year one. Muhammad's goal among the people of Yathrib was the same as his larger mission, to bring unity and peace with his message. He was asked to be a Solomonic figure, to mediate tensions between tribes that seemed intractable. As his work succeeded, the town would become known as the city of the prophet, Medina. Muhammad's great task in Medina was to try and bring together these various groups, and to try and forge a, a community of believers in a way that would uh, bring people together in a sort of harmony. To the divided clans of Medina, Muhammad offered a vision of solidarity. But even as he spread the word of Islam, he didn't challenge the beliefs of other faiths. As the Muslim community grew in Medina, a life of simple devotion and ritual developed. It's said that while he was in Medina, Muhammad received a revelation, instructing those in prayer to face in the direction of the Kaaba in Mecca. Though filled with pagan idols, it was still the shrine of Abraham, the first believer in the one true God. But even as the Muslims were praying toward Mecca, their enemies there were rallying in force. Their goal, to wipe out the Muslims. Muhammad's people began to gather arms. Though the Muslims prepared as best they could, they were outnumbered and outmatched. They mustered a force of only 313, mostly old men and boys, with few weapons. While the approaching Meccans were heavily armed, and a thousand strong. For years, Muhammad had tried to bring Islam to the people of Mecca peacefully. Now, it was time to fight. The Muslims faced their own tribes, brother fighting brother, son against father. When Muhammad came into Mecca, and not only did not carry out a bloody revenge, but actually embraced the very Meccans who had fought him for three years and attempted to annihilate him. 
It was very shocking to uh, the people in his milieu. So um, within the very founding of a religion, one finds episodes of great generosity, um, uh, often extraordinary acts of, of kindness and mercy. But not all of Mecca escaped Muhammad's wrath. Flush with victory, his troops marched straight to the Kaaba. Seven times they circled the shrine, as those who'd come to seek its protection appealed to their idols. But it was not the pagan people Muhammad had come to destroy. It was their gods. He raised his staff, and the tribal gods of his ancestors smashed into dust. When Muhammad entered Mecca and entered the shrine and destroyed the idols of the shrine, this is of great cultural and symbolic importance in Islam. By breaking the idols, he was breaking apart the tribal system in which each tribe really had its own independent deity. This was shocking to the battle. This was saying the gods of our fathers are being destroyed. In some sense, you're saying that our fathers themselves were deluded. How can you say this in a tradition in which relationships to one's father and tribe are primary? So this act of iconoclasm then um, is seen um, as, a, as an act of uh, prophetic violence that has just as much importance in Islamic tradition as uh, Moses' breaking of the tablets when he saw the idolatry at Mount Sinai or Jesus' um, casting money sellers out of the temple. The destruction of the idols was a new beginning, a breaking from the past and the creation of a powerful new force. Mecca was just the beginning. One after another, the tribes of a nation were summoned to the fold and united under the banner of Islam. A worldwide community of faith was begun, born in an extraordinary alignment of history, personality, and conviction. What Muhammad did was to bring a sense of solidarity, a sense of mission, and he united all these separate segments within the peninsula, from then on moved eastward, westward, northward, southward. The Muslims turned to the north, swept into present-day Lebanon and Syria, They continued west into Egypt and quickly across North Africa, fortifying the coastline of the Mediterranean. Only the seas stopped them. Its growth was so explosive uh, from uh, 622, the year one of the Islamic calendar. Um, within 50 years, people whose father had had been camel herders, were now governing one of the major empires in world history. Within 200 years, it extended from Spain to China. The Muslims absorbed the Sasanian Empire of Iran and two-thirds of the Christian Byzantine Empire. By now, the empire was larger than Rome. It stretched from Morocco in the west to the Indus River in the east, where the border of India is today. How had it happened that so small an army could conquer an area so large, so fast, so easily? Islam's success in expanding into the Central Middle East and across North Africa was due in, 
in large part because people were fed up with previous regimes. So the idea that Muslims were going across the world saying convert or die is, is really not accurate, not at all. But it didn't have a heavy hand. It didn't rule with a heavy hand. They, they allowed the, the conquered peoples to maintain their, their administrative uh, structures. They allowed the Christians and the Jews to maintain their religious law and to be governed by them. And so, in many cases, uh, the conquered peoples did not feel the presence of the, the new regime very heavily. Certainly for individuals who felt themselves uh, exploited or downtrodden by an oppressive and even sometimes parasitic priesthood, the idea of Islam being a religion essentially free from clergy must have seemed very attractive. It's the times that creates the movement and sometimes the men. The Roman Empire had collapsed, the Byzantine Empire wasn't strong enough. There was a need for a new vision, a new uh, way of looking into life. And I think what happened at that time, Mohammed's mission filled the void that uh, the societies wanted. They really wanted some sort of solidarity in their lives. Islam has come to stay. In just a hundred years, Muhammad's vision had transformed the spiritual and political map of the world. And his followers had established an empire larger than Rome. But Muhammad never lived to see it. In the 11th year of the Islamic calendar, 632 AD, only two years after the taking of Mecca, Muhammad died. I love anything that has to do with Muhammad because I find him quite fascinating and the facts that uh, surround him are very, very interesting. Although I should ask, so what was the whole purpose of conquering? Why conquer different lands, nations, cities, whatever you want to call them, why conquer them? Also, during this conquering, was it just conquering and letting people have the freedom to do whatever they want to do? Or it was the type of conquering that said, it's either you convert to our religion or you're a slave. It's either you convert to our religion or you'll be punished because when we think about what conquering in the past has stood for and the results that came from that we always get a negative image of something of the situation so i'm asking you guys what was the whole point of conquering other nations or cities in this case and another thing uh if today i'm just glad we're living in a day where we're saying you know what Let's respect people that believe in whatever they're believing in. Because the Kaaba was mentioned in this video. What if today a nation stands and says, that's idol worshipping. Let's break down the Kaaba. What then? Are people going to allow that? And above everything, I've always said, we're human beings. We should learn to live with one another, even if we have different opinions of each other if you're going to say this is your god then be it if you're going to say there's no god then be it let's not insult each other let's not make the other person feel smaller because they believe something different and yeah let's just learn to coexist let me know what you guys actually think about the information in this video otherwise make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video